Assalamu alaikum, welcome to you today clinical case presentation. I am Dr. Fuegin Bashar, RMO, Medicine Unit, Baran Jaran Hospital, Bangladesh. My case, a young girl with patient, Miss X, 14 years old female, heading from Bangshar, Dhaka, admitted in our hospital on 28 August 2000 with a complaint of fever for 3 days, cough and chest pain for same duration. According to the statement of the patient, she was reasonably well three days back, then she developed high-grade fever without chills and rigors, with the highest recorded temperature of 103 degree Fahrenheit and lowest of 100 degree Fahrenheit. Patient took antipyretic for her fever, but fever did not remit completely. There was cough which was initially dry, but eventually became productive with whitish mucoid sputum and did not contain any blood. She also had rice at a cyst pain which aggravated with coughing and deep inspiration. On query, she gave history of loss of appetite with weight loss of around 3 kg in last 3 months. Her bowel and bladder habit was She did not complain any burning sensation of maturation, abdominal pain, joint pain or skin rash or loss of consciousness or seizure. There was no history of recent travel, blood transfusion or exposure to pets. But actually her history did not end here. One and a half years back she had a history of six month fever in relapsing and remitting course for which she was hospitalized for several times under department of pediatrics. However, her fever had no focal feature and she was eventually referred to the Department of Internal Medicine for further work. She was discussed in our medicine grand round. She underwent thorough examination repeatedly and relevant investigation including imaging, screening for infection, ANA, ANCA, ENA profile, bone marrow examination and lymph node biopsy were done. But reports are inconclusive except feature of anemia of chronic disease, high ESR, CRP, and weekly positive ANA that subsequently become negative. So with those inconclusive findings, her case was discussed repeatedly among us. And ultimately she was prescribed oral prednisolone, keeping in mind the possibility of an underlying autoimmune disease. Interestingly, her fever subsided within a week and the steroid was gradually referred off in around 3 months with meticulous follow up. After that, she was reasonably well for about 9 months. With this background, she was admitted under medicine department for further workup. History of fast illness. She had a history of skin tuberculosis and received anti-TB medication 8 years back and socioeconomic personal family history are nothing contributory. She belongs to low socioeconomic background and her menstrual cycle was regular with average flow. She was immunized as per EPA schedule. On her treatment history, she got gortriplep, paracetamol, capsule cefexin 200mg before admission. On general examination, she looked ill, below BMI, mildly anemic, Temperature 102 degree Fahrenheit on vitals pulse 110 per minute regular. Palpable but feeble in left radial artery. Right radial pulse not palpable. Blood pressure on left arm 85 by 60 mm mercury. Right arm not recordable. Other findings are, was undermined. Examination. Examination of cardiovascular system reveals. Regular low volume pulse, right radial brachial pulse not palpable, all other peripherals are feeble, no radiofemular delay. There was left carotid and both subclavian vrui. Blood pressure already mentioned. Ankle brachial pressure index 1 1. No postural drop, JVP not raised. Recording examination was in case of a res respiratory system examination, reveals. No abnormality except crepitation present over right 7 to 8 intercostal space along the dorsal skin. In case of elementary system examination, her bowel habit was normal, abdominal aortic vui and bilateral renal vui present. Nervous system examination was within normal. So slight picture.
a 14 year old normotensive female presented with high grade fever cough with whitish mucoid sputum and rice sided fluidic type of chest pain for 3 days there was also anorexia with significant weight loss for last 3 months she had a background history of pyrexia of unknown origin for 6 months and received oral steroid that was subsequently tapered off in 3 months along with improvement of her symptom on examination she was mildly anemic tachycardic febrile regular and low volume pulse but right radial and brachial pulse were not palpable all other peripheral pulse were feeble there were also left carotid both subclavian abdominal aortic and bilateral renal vri blood pressure was 85 by 60 mm mercury there was no lymphadenopathy or organomegaly of any other focal sign except crepitation present over right 7 to 8 interstitial space along the dorsal scapular line so what the provisional diagnosis my provisional diagnosis right sided pneumonia with takayasu art and i have a differential like tuberculosis so what are the investigation we prescribe for the patient advice in case of complete blood count her hemoglobin was 10.2 g per dl total count of raise 18730 mg neutrophilic leukocytosis platelet 5 lakh per centimeter cube ESR 190 mm in first hour CRP 166 mg per liter here we show in chest x-ray peer view we show a cavity like lesion in right lungs this is right lateral view on a sputum examination, gram stain showing gram positive cockave and gram negative bacilli have plenty in amount. A have been first, sem first and second sample was negative, gene expert negative. Also showing growth of candida species. Monto uh, text. In case of imaging, ultrasonogram of whole abdomen showing no sign. But CT autogram findings are was remarkable like moderate diffusely narrowing in left common carotid artery there was also narrowing of proximal right common carotid and subclavian artery gradual narrowing of abdominal aorta after origin of celiac artery both renal arteries are narrow more in origin of left here we showing gradual narrowing of the abdominal aorta then narrowing present in both renal artery Narrowing also present right brachycephal in tongue, muku left common carotid, and left subclavian artery. Yeah, there is typical findings in Takayasu where gradual narrowing present in abdominal aorta and both renal artery more in left renal artery. Duplex study of both lower limb showing mild flow reduction about 50 percent in all the arteries of both lower limbs urinary blood urine cs was in within our with our this is normal equal showing abdominal aortic tracing has diastolic displaced this is indicating some obstruction at distal aortic level liver renal and some electrolyte or the vitamin calcium was normal with excess serum albumin 29.7 gram per dl and vitamin d deficiency so my final diagnosis takaisu arthritis type 5 and right sided resolving pneumonia we give the patient treated the patient with antibiotic penicillin azathioprine calcium and vitamin d B. after subsequent follow-up patient right radial pulse now present but feeble right arm blood pressure 75 by 60 millimeter mercury left arm 95 by 70 millimeter mercury right carotid abdominal right renal ref renal vri present till now but milder in intensity both subclavian vri absent hemoglobin raised to 12 gram per dl crp sr decrease and a uh, Temperature 98 
as we give the treat the patient with steroid and immunosuppressor so we regularly follow up the patient blood glucose profile like uh, her first two weeks are within normal limit her vitamin d now 44 nanogram per ml bmd minus 1.2 serum basal cortisol are 391.97 our follow-up extra was normal for patient satisfaction pattern done pet scan report in india which showing to see any evidence of active disease which showing findings of concern for takaya's water it is type 5 and no evidence of active disease so now move on discussion Takayasu arteritis is chronic idiopathic inflammatory entities that primarily affect large blood vessels like aorta and its primary branches. Patient may present initially with constitutional symptom but later develop symptom associated with vascular. It's more in female, male to female ratio 1 is to 9. Here we show the course of the disease. At first, present to, uh, patient present to us with the Complain of fever, weight loss, joint pains, limp and others constitutional symptom. But now present develop patient present us with vascular insufficiency like stenosis. And we hope patient may go into remission. So to determine the TAC activity, we should follow this guideline like if patients constitutional symptoms are absent inflammatory markers become normal and no new imaging findings that we call the patient is now on remission and if remission criteria is at least six months then it's called sustained according to radiological classification our patient taka patient was in type 5 taka so arteritis which uh, means generalized involvement of all autism in case of prognosis approximately 20 percent patient have self-limiting disease in remaining 80 percent patient who are immunosuppressive therapy resulted in remission in 60 percent and one have experienced relapse after immunosuppressive therapy was stopped so thank you for patience hearing and this is our national language day so, Shokal Bhasha Shwetir Bhuti Binomo Sraddha Dhanavad.